which was our first major rule, we bring the number in front, subtract one from the exponent. Then we found out that the derivative of a constant, which was really a special case of the product of the power rule, if you have a five, the derivative of five is zero. If you have a seven, the derivative of seven is zero. And then we found out if you're adding different things together, like if I had 5x squared plus 3x, I could just do the derivative of each of them separate and add it together. And so it's not surprising that when you went from adding and it worked, that you could just take the derivative of each thing separate and add them, that when you get to multiplying, you go, wouldn't it be nice just to do the derivative of each part separate and multiply them? That seems to be what would make sense. It would be nice. But unfortunately, well, if you thought that, you would be thinking exactly the same as Leibniz, who developed calculus. He thought the same thing when he came across it. Like, that would be what I'd like to try. But you find out right away that it's wrong. And a very easy example to see why it's wrong is if you would take something like x times x to the fourth. You know that that's x to the five. And we know the derivative of x to the five is 5x to the fourth. But if I found the derivative of each of them separately, the derivative of x is 1. The derivative of four, x to the four is 4x cubed, and unfortunately, that doesn't equal 5x to the 4. But there's enough times that we're multiplying that we need to come up with a rule. And is the rule simple? No, absolutely not. The rule looks like this. Maybe, wait for it, if you're multiplying two things, to find the derivative, you should, and sometimes if we color code this, you can see it even better. So I'm going to pull out a highlighter, which should work in about five minutes here. It's not responding. I'm going to highlight the u of x in yellow and the v of x in green so that you can see how the formula works. But at the moment, I'm going to take a coffee break because it's not responding and try it again. There we go. Highlighter, u of x in yellow, u of x in yellow. In this part down here in Leibniz dotation, it's just a u instead of a u of x, and that would just be the u right there. That is no longer yellow. Just the u, just the u. And then in green highlighter, the v of x, the v of x, the v, the v. And what the product rule says is if f of x, any function, is the product of two other functions, to find the derivative, you keep the first one the same and multiply it by the derivative of the second one. And then you keep the second one the same and multiply it by the derivative of the first one. You see, in Leibniz notation, it does the same thing. You've got u times v. You keep u the same, the first one the same. And dv dx is the derivative of the second one. Then you keep the second one the same. There's v, there's v. And multiply it by the derivative of the first one. And this is where this unit has shortcuts. It's still going to be way quicker than the definition of the derivative, but you have to remember what the rules are. And this is also 
where calculus can make you look really like someone else who doesn't know the rules of calculus and watches you do calculus, you blow their mind. They're like, how? That makes no sense to me. But you have these like hidden rules that you don't share with them and just say, oh, yeah, I just did that in my head. Okay? This is what it looks like. So here's an example. We have y equals x squared times 2x minus 1 using the product rule. y prime would be keep the first one the same. So I just have x squared first. It's important to recognize where the multiplication is. I'll put a blue dot there because we are multiplying x squared. We'll call that our first term. And 2x minus 1, our second one. So we keep x squared the same. And then we multiply by the derivative of the second one. So what's the derivative of 2x minus 1? The derivative of 2x is just 2. The derivative of minus 1 would be 0. So the derivative of that whole second part is just 2. It's really, really important that you get your first derivative rules. You know them very well, very quickly. So make sure you're doing the practice so that you've got your derivative rules from the first part down pat, your power rule. Okay. Next, we keep. We add, we keep the second one the same, which is 2x minus 1. And we multiply by the derivative of the first one. Our first one was x squared. What do we do for our power rule? The power comes out in front. Subtract 1 from the exponent, so there'd be a 1 there. And this is our answer. If we take this answer and simplify it, and this is where your textbook will really, really, really improve your algebra skills, is they will take answers like this and simplify them. So in this case, can you see that would be 2x squared plus, if I multiplied here, I would get 2x times 2x, 4x squared, 2x times minus 1, minus 2x. I have some things in common. So your textbook might write the final answer like this. Okay, Your textbook might factor out the common factor and write it in factored form like that. What your goal is going to be when you do these questions in your textbook is you're going to do the power rule as stated. Then you're going to look at the answer key of your textbook. And it becomes a mini proof. You have to make sure you can algebraically manipulate your initial answer to the simplified answer in the textbook. And that's where your algebra skills are just going to get better and better and better. Okay? On tests, I will often say it is OK to not simplify. So if you are finding the derivative, this is all you would do is write that first step. Question. Yes. And that's exactly what I was going to do next. So what Lily's saying is in this particular case, it is not hard to take the original equation and develop it. Can you see that if you multiplied it through, you would get y equals 2x cubed minus x squared. And the derivative of this is just your power rule with sum and difference rule. What's the derivative of the first one? Bring the 3 out in front. That would be a 6. Subtract 1 from the exponent squared. Bring the 2 out in front, minus 2. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Boom. We've got the same answer a lot easier. So at this point, someone might argue, well, why did we need the power rule or the product rule? Because this was a lot easier. Yes, but there will be some times that multiplying things out is not easy at all. So that would be something you make a decision. Would I multiply these out? This one's not bad. 
Multiplying this out isn't bad. We could do it both ways, okay? So first of all, let's do the product rule. The product rule would say, keep the first one the same. Multiply by the derivative of the second one. Then, keep the second one the same. Multiply by the derivative of the first one. First one, okay. Are you sure, everybody okay that I made this my two terms with the multiplying in between? Now the derivative of my first one. Power rule. Put the 4 out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. Derivative of minus 7x. Just minus 7. And here's our answer. The 12x cubed came from the derivative here. So I bring the 4 out, which gives me 12. Subtract 1 from the exponent, x cubed. So if we were like 4, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to underline this. And I'm going to put a dotted line under that one. I'm going to underline this one and put a purple dotted line under that. That's the, this dotted line is the derivative of that. The yellow dotted line is the derivative of the yellow underline. Now, since you're adding, the order doesn't matter. Agreed? So some people will say, the product rule, you just need to keep one of them the same, multiply by the derivative of the other one, then add, keep the other one the same, and multiply by the derivative of the other. Because it wouldn't matter if you wrote this one first or that one first. Or, in this case, we could have multiplied it all out. 3x to the 4 times 2x gives me 6x to the 5. 3x to the 4 minus 1, minus 3x to the 4. Negative 7x times 2, negative 14x squared. And negative 7x times a negative 1, plus 7x. That wasn't hard to multiply out. And if I multiply this one out, now each of my individual derivatives is just a straightforward power law. Bring the 5 out in front, 30, x to the 4. Bring the 4 out in front, minus 12, x cubed. Bring the 2 out in front, minus 28, x, and then plus 7. Question. I will mark it right either way. Out of when you ask if I care, I would, as a mathematician, you prefer to write it as the highest degree down in that order. It allows you to do, like, if you had to divide this using synthetic division, it's in the right order. So, no, it's not. It's not a deduction if you don't do it. So again, I might still argue in this one, I like our original technique better. But as you get into more complicated functions, like square roots and cube roots, and later on we're going to introduce sine, cos, tan, logarithms, powers, derivatives of all of those ones, okay? then that's where the product rule really becomes important. So again, here's the notation. ddx of this means find the derivative of that. Keep one the same. Multiply by the derivative of the second one. And are you okay if when I keep this one the same, are you okay if I change that square root of x cubed to x to the 3 halves? 
because the square root is an exponent of a half. The derivative of my second one, the derivative of 1, is 0. The derivative of 5x squared will be 10x plus, now keep the second one the same, and the derivative of the first one, and the reason I changed it to x to the 3 halves is that allows me to bring that 3 halves in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. The derivative of x plus 1. That's, I, I'm debating that right now. Assume you have to have them memorized. Yes. Okay? And I might allow a formula sheet moving forward. But for, you will find with product rule, quotient rule, with all of your derivatives, like your power rule, you will need a working knowledge of them. They don't, yeah. And so if you can memorize them early, you will be able to do all sorts of mathematics quicker all throughout this semester. If you're like, oh, I don't have to memorize them because they're on my formula sheet, it's going to slow you down for questions later on. So at this point, let's assume we have to memorize all of our laws for derivatives because we want them to be quick and easily accessible when we're doing our work. Okay, so there's some questions, but before that, let's up the product rule just a little bit. Let's make it a little bit interesting. What happens if we were multiplying three things? And let's multiply three things that you actually wouldn't want to multiply together to figure them out. So let's say y is equal to x to the 7 thirds plus 5x multiplied by x to the 8 sevenths minus x to the 3 halves multiplied by x to the 2 thirds plus x. Would you agree that you would not want to FOIL this out or multiply it out or distribute it? Okay? Now, the product rule is there when you multiply two things. The product rule isn't there when you multiply three things. Okay? So when you're multiplying three things, what you have to do is decide I'm going to call this multiplying by two things. I could say this is my first one with a big green dot, and this is my second one. That would work, right? Then how do we do the product rule? We'll talk this through first, and then we'll do it. The product rule says keep this one the same. So that would be, that's the favorite part of the product rule. You're like, Nailed it, kept it the same, wrote it down again. Awesome. But then you would have to do the derivative of the second one. And how do we do the derivative of the second one? The second one is another product rule. So we have a product rule inside of the product rule. But the rules stay the same. This is the hard part about derivatives is that you have to manage the basic rules within complicated questions. So the basic rule is keep one the same, derivative of the second, plus keep the second the same, derivative of the first. So let's go through those rules. I'm going to have to maybe write a little bit small. Why? Oh, I want to go black. Okay. Keep the first the same. Oh, I am so good at keeping it the same. Right? If you start making mistakes with the part where you have to keep the same, then we have issues. Because then it's just like you cannot copy that down. Oh. 
And now we have to do the derivative of this. And I'm going to put a square bracket here. Because how do we do the derivative of that? We have another product rule. So now, how do you do the product rule of this part with the purple dot? You would keep 1 the same. I maybe shouldn't have used so many fractions, but it's not bad. Multiplied by the derivative of the first one. So the 2 thirds would come out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent plus 1, plus, now we keep the second one the same, derivative of the first one, so the 8 sevenths would come out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, minus the 3 halves would come out in front, subtract 1 from the exponent, and that square bracket. Okay, so what have I done? I have kept this one the same, and then in this square bracket, was the derivative of the second one. And then I have to add, and now I keep the second one the same. That's all, oh, this feels good to keep the second one the same. Because the second one was all of this, right? That's the second one. I'll put square brackets around everything I do with the second one. Multiplied by the derivative of the first one, so my 7 thirds would come out in front. I subtract 1 from the exponent. Plus the derivative of 5x is just 5. And there we have our final answer. And we sure hope they don't simplify it too much. Okay? They get quite long. I can remember, I'll tell you a story of the first time I started teaching calculus. I was in my second year of university. And I got hired to teach the labs of first year calculus. And in, this, in the building that I was teaching the first year calculus, they had designed the classrooms so that there were platforms at the front. I don't know if teachers like to feel like they were bigger. So I was actually one foot higher. And it was three platforms in a row. And I'm doing a product law rule like this that's super long. I'm doing it on the chalkboard. It starts on this side. If I wrote this out, can you see that it would have ended up over here? So I'm starting to write, and I'm going, I'm, I'm going along, and there was a chair on one of the platforms. I had to put my knee on the chair and keep reaching over and over, and I didn't realize that one of the legs of the chairs was right in between two platforms. And so as I leaned, the chair leg went through the platforms, and I literally flew sideways like a volleyball dive, holding my calculus books, protecting it while hitting the floor. And all of the students said that that was their favorite calculus lesson all year, to watch me fly off the platforms while I did a super long. Maybe that's for safety reasons. They no longer let teachers stand on platforms because of that. Question and then question. Maybe. In this case, in this case, if you multiplied it out, it would take some time to multiply it out. But the other, the other nice thing about multiplying it out is when you get your answer, it's simplified, right? It's already in a much simpler form. Okay? But as far as If you can manage the rules, though, if you can manage the rules and keep that straight in your head, derivatives are really one-step questions. You see how we had the question? We wrote the answer in one step. Okay? And yet, so once you can manage that rule, anybody who looks over your shoulder, right? Any other teacher walking into here, having a look at the board, would look at you guys. Their eyes might get a little big, and they'll run away. Because it looks scary. But it's not that bad. And some of you are looking at me like, yes, Mr. Chair, it is still, it is, it is that bad. But once you can manage the data, it isn't that bad. Question.
Again, you can write your answer in any form that is correct. So if you had an x to the negative 3, I don't require you to write it as a 1 over x to the 3. But you will start to know that, uh, notice that I start to put questions that say, show that, where this first step doesn't match what I ask you to show it as. So you need to have all of those algebra skills to manipulate. Yeah. And one of the things that's also good about your textbook is your textbook will um, always have the answer in the textbook according to the general rules of mathematical simplification. Right? If mathematics could write a whole novel on what does it mean to simplify? Because simplify means at least 100 different things in mathematics. Okay, sorry. Not a little